Hi, slugs. It's your girls. We're all three here today. This episode is a wild ride, and I am announcing some tour dates. I'm coming to Portland and San Francisco and New York City. Get tickets at estheronice.com and also check out sleepoverbyester.com for my wonderful clothing line. Guys, the road has been freaking amazing. Please keep coming back. I love meeting all you guys. I, it's an honor to make you laugh. You can see me next at Comedy Works in Denver, Colorado. Then I'll be at the Laugh Out Loud Comedy Club in San Antonio, October 23rd, 22nd through 23rd. I'm going to be at Skank Fest in Houston, Plano, Texas, House of Comedy, November 11th through 14th. The Irvine Improv, December 2nd. Austin, Texas, Cap City, December 9th through 11th. Uh, I'll be at Bananas Comedy Club in December 16th through 18th. And there's a lot more dates on my website. Go to AnnieLetterman.com. Pick up a shirt. You guys have been rocking them. I love it. Thank you guys so much. Peace. Oh, it's so funny. This sound is so like the suction release like it's the clip out and then when he takes this off it's like <gasps> it sounds like that like it, it made this if you put that on your lips would it like make them bigger you know <laughs> like <laughs> suction <laughs> wait but this is actually how i look i feel like i look so hot as dave you do look you dare i say the hottest are. you've ever looked it's are you attracted? I've never been. <laughs> not, my, not my taste in any outfit. It's not really the outfit issue. <laughs> the skin. Wait, I am so excited right Wait, now. I have more to show you. Why are Todd's pants tight on you? I mean, I was just going to say, by the way, literally I was going to say, I used to dress like a boy every once in a while. And I was like, I never looked hotter because it hangs off your hips. And sh <laughs> These are like high waisted pants. I have like camel toe in my boyfriend's. <laughs> The, oh, the, oh wait, I have more. I have more. I had him draw his oh, tattoos on me. Shit. <laughs> I woke his ass up with Sharpies. I was like, wake up, babe. <laughs> Time to draw. And then I was criticizing it at every moment. I was like, that's really ugly. You look a little bit like a like a Bears fan on SNL. Like you're gonna say, duh, Bears. Well, <laughs> well, in that sentiment, I was like, he is Asian, and how tempting was that? Ooh, how tempting was shit. that? Ooh. It was almost like, is you today the day I get canceled? <laughs> would have I we would have given you a pass, I think. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't because you're I like an needed, honorary Asian at this point. I would have needed uh 99 out of 100 Asians that we lined up to say it was okay before I did it. Yeah. And I would need them to sign and it would have to be a whole Let's thing. Let's be real. I mean, I've been Pocahontas before. Is that know? bad? Yeah. Oh, because you're not Native American. I'm not She's Native. Native American. But it's really hard to believe. <laughs> I just want to throw, every time I that's see even, you, I, that's even I just want to put a feather right in your fucking head every That's time even worse, you. right? Like being sort of like, sort of almost get, looking like one and then like... Guys, Imagine if any of us says if if I was in the industry, if I was an actor, to just be like completely ambiguous and yeah. not like yeah, you say what I am. But I feel like it's kind of fucked up. Well, that's like our friend Jenna, who's an actress, and she. I feel like she always like it, it, things have changed a lot in the last ten years. But before that, people always thought she was Indian, and like that. That's how she would like she would get cast as someone Indian. But she always not. showed up with a bindi. No. <laughs> <laughs> she has worn a bindi for sure. Um, okay, there's another, I taped my tits down, which I know was maybe not necessary. <laughs> now that I'm, I cannot is breathe. wishful. Oh. <gasps> Let me see. <laughs> but I couldn't what? help but make it a little hot. <laughs> you know what I mean? What have you done? You're I the only breathe. person in the world who would make titty tape look hot. Wait, uh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Uh, is there a tape on directly on your nipple? Yes. Annie, I gotta help you out of this. Well, then I'll be able to um, pluck my nipple hair at the same time. <laughs> oh, by the way, I had to take my abs off because usually I have abs, so I paint I painted them off because I have real abs. And because Todd Todd's doesn't. Fat. <laughs> so today we are dressed as our as our boyfriends. Esther, I feel like you should have to wear the mask the whole time. <laughs> You've never looked hotter. <laughs> <laughs> Esther, I love this look on you. I I feel so fucking hot. I feel, just feel hot. Don't you? You don't see it. You just are a lesbian. It's like really <laughs> weird. It's like just dress like you want. You could just dress like this. This is how I feel. It's best. not that off. Like and then I got his box. Dave's a boxer guy. Are, are you wearing boxers? Yeah, no, I boxer got... briefs. Boxer briefs. You guys already know. Let's 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 not pretend we don't know what Bobby's underwear looks like. Bob Ross. Is that Bob Ross? Mm -hmm. Okay, that's cool. Wait, let's see your underwear. Oh, God, that's so cool. This is the longest. I've never seen Bobby in long, in long yeah. underwear. 
But these are his. He's. These are his. These are his. <laughs> She is. Dave um, is, a cl- is a classic man in his forties. Is this Dave's tattoo? It's no. These know, are from the last episode. Uh, oh, is by Dave- the way, wait. Can we talk about the last episode? <laughs> First of all, you have my arch nemesis on. <laughs> By the way, Rick Glassman does not follow me on Instagram, and I give him very good comments. It's a, it, there's a grudge from one side. I know that the grudge. is so juicy, and he will be confronted on this because your girl's funny. There's no reason to not love it. I this is what I wrote. He he said he posted a thing on his. You can't not respond to this. He posted a thing on his Instagram that was like, "Hey, do you guys know any Holocaust survivors? I'd love to interview them on my podcast." And I wrote under it. They've been through enough. Like, leave them alone. <laughs> How are you not? That's I. That's undeniably the funniest thing someone could ever write. It's like, no like. No, it got, like, all these likes. No response. He it's didn't like, pin it? Because he's got it. He has a grudge with me. And it's like, listen, we're both on the spectrum. You can't play your little autistic thing with me, motherfucker. Okay? <laughs> we're both. I went to occupational therapy. Okay? I got rubbed up and down with a weird vibrating thing. <laughs> with a horse brush? Least, Yes, and I got brushed at home. My mom would have to brush me with yeah. a surgical brush. So a <laughs> surgical brush. Yeah, like the brushes they use on their hands. I it's will say there's a large appetite out there, a large appetite for a for Rick and Annie in the same room. Yes. I know, but but listen, I'm gonna tell you it's not coming from me because listen. Mm. I, I think, think I know what the grudge is, but you know, we'll talk about it when he comes back on and we do a lingerie 2.0. I literally get, oh, and then you do lingerie, you look hot. And then for me, you're like, hey, dress like a dude. <laughs> you're like, no, we'll save the one where I, it looks like, You're looking well, at the wrong know, person. Know, right, right. Uh, also, don't look this way. That's George. the mastermind. The George perv himself, decides. George Kimmel. George didn't want to get a boner with you me You guys here. did leprechauns without me. That seems unfair. Is that what we look like, leprechauns? Why? They, well, do you want to know why we did that? Because it wasn't, I she's saying leprechauns, my... Annie. We were fairies. We sure were leprechauns. You guys were not fairies. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Esther's a fairy right now. <laughs> I, it does look good. It does actually look good. Like, it's there's something to it, you It's guys. so sad that you're like so desperately want to look like you went to Harvard. I was like, <laughs> no way. It's like, we know this bitch fucking dropped out of school. You look like you do listen to Wilco. I, yes, he loves Wilco. By the way, I did shows in, um, in Chicago and you were missed. Oh my God, how was it? Did you eat anything good? No, I was in the fucking hotel getting room service. I was like. (laughs) Oh, you didn't get pizza? No, Oh, you don't eat cheese. Well, I mean, I will, but I just was like, I had just done my ayahuasca weekend. So it was like the day after I was like, I don't think I can eat cheese ever again. And I'm like. Wait, I want to talk about this. Um, There's I so want to much. know what what visions came through um, during your last ayahuasca (sighs) trip. I had a vision of Esther eating out another girl no you didn't <laughs> no but you got excited <laughs> you're, like, you're like what did it look like say more <laughs> um no i didn't want to do the weekend as we know you're right. I was very hesitant why not because i'm i'm having too many shaman i have too many shamans in my <laughs> she head has a shami that, dilemma you I know that sh- problem in your life where you just have too many shamans <laughs> I, I know that i'm doing well financially because i have a shaman problem it's like i'm killing it <laughs> One shaman, you can still be broke, all right? <laughs> Two shamans, your money's going places, okay? <laughs> your assets are growing. When I you am <laughs> uh, manifesting some stuff. So, okay, so one shaman was like... Do the well, shamans get along? Well, they don't know. I have one that's a divorce shaman and one's a gay shaman. Okay. And that it's... but. They're all so good. I love them. But one shaman I haven't met. I just know him through his brother-in-law, who I do like these training courses with that are very cool this guy jim fortin but so oh i love a- the jim fortin podcast which you told me about oh my god are you listening to it not lately but i i should but you told me about it last year and, and I, when i was listening to it, i thought it was actually beautiful did i give you a tool to change your life yes but i did not use it you didn't no. use it that's very typical Esther. It's okay no but i do like it a lot well i did this whole like training program with him for like 14 weeks and it's like the greatest thing that's ever happened we need to hear more but, but- and it is opening up if you guys want to join, but you have to tell them it's through me. So I go. Oh my um, god, this is a business scam. It's not a business scam. No, okay, wait. So, so tell no, I us. I need credit. About the shamans. Okay, so he has a shaman that he talks about all the time. Jim Fortin, his brother in law is a shaman. Mm. Then I have my own shaman, who's my like ayahuasca shaman, who I like love, and he's amazing. He's what from- is this uh, shaman certification? Process? Okay, well here's the thing. So my shaman that does, he's like a ayahuasca shaman, so yeah. he's like trained in. He trained um, with these Peruvian guys in Brazil. Mm-hmm. 
where he lives and he's South African. And so he trained with like the people that have done it for, you know, their families done it for decades and or hundreds of years, whatever. And then you got a real badunka dunk over there <laughs> sticking out of your pants. <laughs> happy trees, happy little trees. There's just a real dunker. I'm over still there. working on that root chakra, guys. So I can Ooh, we're going to talk better. about my root chakra so then, later. I mean, there's things I can't even talk about, but um, oh my God. <laughs> So, okay, so then I have the other shaman is, so he's trained that way and he's like not, but he's, he's kind of like becoming, like, I don't know, he's, he's very like excellent and skilled at this at, at ayahuasca shaman. Okay. My Jim Fortin shaman is like, was born in Mexico to a family of shamans and was like buried to his neck in dirt and given like mushrooms when he was nine and like left in the desert like he was like a he is like a trained motherfucking shaman okay like this guy is like can get in your mind when you're not there like he's like he is like a spiritual yeah. thing entity and um so they're different but he randomly i'm in this um like i have this one program where there's like a bunch of videos that jim did a couple years ago so i just like randomly was like watching a video i don't even remember what the topic was but someone asked a question about ayahuasca and he was like guys don't do ayahuasca and it was like i had already signed up i was like had my plane ticket i was like wait what why did i randomly click on this thing that said don't no, do why ayahuasca? did he what did it say not to do ayahuasca? Well, because he doesn't want people you don't want to just go do ayahuasca with some idiot like right. someone that doesn't know what they're doing True. because you are like going to another like like dimension dimension i don't know place you're like time, you're like you're, astral you're, plane. you're going to another yeah. astral plane you're like in yeah life death yeah the the light yeah like it's just you go to a place that's really wild and he was just saying you don't want to do it with someone that's not trained because you want someone to be able to like put you back here like you don't want to like properly be, yeah because this girl was saying she was having nightmares and stuff now i have never not been like a hundred percent into my experiences with ayahuasca where i'm like i'm going in a hundred percent i'm drinking every cup offered to me i i love and trust everyone in this community and, but when I heard that, it put this like seed of doubt in me. And then I started to panic. And I was like, wait, but I am doing well. I don't want to be like, it wasn't, I've never done ayahuasca. And like I did this situation where my life is like very good. You know, like I was always looking for something at a specific thing. I was anxiously attached about a guy, which by the way, write that down. Because I heard my guy on a fucking podcast, one of my old guys on a podcast explaining some stuff that was very interesting wait what i can't wait to tell you but let me just try to stay on track what should we just stop right now i don't know you're the, you're in charge baby but that's what i learned because i didn't want to do the ayahuasca because i had these voices in my head from other people and then i was like in the end when i did the ayahuasca i was like the lesson was no more peer pressure no more no more external validation no more asking yeah. others what i should do yeah this is about listening to myself <laughs> what and do doing i what really I wanna, want what do i really want and i was in it i was fighting it the first time i was fighting it i just kept thinking about how much i love todd i was like oh my god i'm so in love i love him i love him i love him i love randy and just like really feeling like guilty that i wasn't with them and feeling very homesick but feeling just so in love with him like just like I, this is my guy i love him and um and then <laughs> the next night um like i drank it and mother ayahuasca literally like came to me and started like trying to peel my nose like take my nose off and peel my lips off so that i would like she was trying to like kill my ego like so i wasn't me anymore i was just like the light or whatever and i just didn't want to do it i was like no bitch i don't want to go this deep like i don't feel like going this deep i'm like working on myself here and i don't want to do it but and I knew that she was going to make me do stuff with my parents. And I feel like I've like really worked on like detaching from the upset of my parents eventually like leaving this earth and not completely. Obviously, I'm going to be sad and stuff, but I'm really like doing a lot of work on that. And I was like, this fucking bitch is going to like find where I'm not fully there yet. Yeah. So you're not ready to go there. Yeah. But I but she took me there anyway. I had to kill my parents again. I was like, my mom <laughs> fucking dead. My mom's dead. Oh my God. I was like, fuck, bitch. Like, what the hell? But then I like called my parents and I was like over this bucket and I was feeling so like I miss Todd. I miss Randy. I was just like so homesick and I was like crying over this bucket. Did you and I miss just a little Esther and a Kalila in there? I did there? miss you guys. Well, I did talk to you about it and we only talk in person. So. <laughs> <laughs> but um, but yeah, no, that came up too. But the parent thing was like, so I'm like over this bucket and I was like, I was crying and like, throw and when you throw up, it's not like, 
I don't like feel like, oh, I got to throw up. Yeah. Whenever I feel like a, a sadness or like a, a bad feeling that I'm working through, when I'm ready, I like sit up and it, it, it literally it. just, it purges out like, like, what? it really does feel like you're like getting helped Release, by your ancestors yeah. or whatever. So I'm like vomiting. It's so funny. I look like this when I'm talking about this. <laughs> I'm vomiting into this bucket and I just started crying and I was like, I just don't want to do this alone. And then it was like, boom, there's like the core belief that's been killing yeah. me. Like this like, like eternal, like sadness and being alone. And so then I realized like, I'm, I have to like call my people with me cause they're a part of me and there's no way like, it's not just like the tangible earth, you know, it's like I have to really start leveling up and looking at vibration and knowing that all of my people are always with me. So I like mm. called my parents to come like be with me when I was lonely and my mom was like helping me get water. Like I looked so crazy. I'm like, Bleh, like laying down and I'm like grabbing water like, thanks, mama. <laughs> Thank you, mama. <laughs> but it was like, you know, my mom was like, always be with you. And my dad was there, oh. too, but it was more about my mom this time. And then um, I also was. I mean, there were so many things, but I didn't, I only, they offer you three cups throughout the night. So like every two hours, like you can come if you want to go deeper. And I didn't, but I, I had to go, I went to the altar and I was like crying to my shaman. I was like, is it okay that I don't want to take more? And he was like, yes. Like, but I was like, this is the thing. Like I was like sobbing because I wasn't like fitting in with everyone. Mm -hmm. Everyone else was doing it. And it was just like, but it felt to me, I really learned that it's like braver for me to not do it sometimes than mm. it is to me for me to do the thing. Wait, yeah. what I, I want to ask. Well, about, we know you think that. <laughs> do less. <laughs> I wanted to ask you, um, what about the guy with the serpent, the serpent on the altar? Oh, there was a guy who was like shaking, like he was vibrating. He was like three people away from me. He was vibrating in a way that was like, I, I literally was like, this is a fucking serpent. <laughs> and I was like, what is going on? What are you battling? Like, what are you? Like, I was like, this is a man who's like, something's <laughs> happening. It was, I've never, this isn't like a, like this was like a, I, I, I just, I, I couldn't believe it. When you it. do ayahuasca, um, when you look up, right? And you're not hugging the bucket. Um, are you here or are you completely departed? Like, are you able to like, it's, it's just both. So much like if you have to take in. a shit, yeah. you have, you can go. I mean, if the cops came in, I have, no, I, I honestly can't <laughs> imagine that scenario. I love that word departed. I'm really, that's fun. I want to say do like, you like dearly. <laughs> dearly? Like, I'm not, I'm just departed right you're, now. No, you're nearly departed. <laughs> <laughs> but I, um, yeah, but I was thinking, I was really appreciating um, your, the work that you do. The Tell extra stuff that you do on the podcast because I'm going to out us right now. Esther and I do not watch shit. We do not. <laughs> well, yeah, no. Kalila is the Kalila editing mastermind. really like. <laughs> I think about that too. You, she's the editing mastermind for sure. Yeah. Like which is not a small part. Like that is actually the secret to the, a successful podcast. If you could hear the stuff she usually says. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm sure that we all believe it's me. She really is just flapping that mouth. Um, <laughs> but I think we came up with that plan well before our yeah, first we episode. Knew. Yes. You guys are very clear. Like we are just going to show up if that's okay. And I'm like, yes, that's fine. She's you have always I'll been do the mastermind. The, right. And we want to give you more of Esther's money. <laughs> <laughs> We've decided to give you. This is what we decided. You were in my trip. We decided it. But wait, do you know what is crazy? Side note, while she is the editing mastermind, she also, did you by chance see her full body in her lingerie outfit? No, I already know. It's, I, it's when I'm crazy. When I'm us fat, I'm really just calling her fit. But you it's, know that, right? it's like a different level. I didn't know sh what we have with her. Like, yeah. this is like our little, like, just go out there. You know that TikTok where it's like, hello, whore. <laughs> Here comes the whore. Like, that's, I, I'm just so We're the, I'm the old, you're the fat, she's the whore. <laughs> Growing up, cereal was actually the best part of my childhood. Everyone can tell. <laughs> There's literally nothing that okay. screams, I love cereal more than the shape of your face, your height, your size, Esther, but why made. did we have to give it up? Because it's full of sugar and garbaggio. It's not good for you. And that's why there's one brand that has changed my life forever for the Hollywood good. Hollywood approved, okay? Magic Spoon. Zero grams of sugar, 13 to 14 grams of protein, and only four net grams of carbs in each serving, and only 140 calories a serving. It's keto-friendly, gluten-free, grain-free, soy-free, low-carb, and GMO-free. But did you ever just wake up as a kid and, like, sprint down the stairs and, like, ready for your cartoons I did, and your cereal? I did, but I know you didn't sprint, okay? <laughs> 
Fair enough. I was pushed. You guys, the <laughs> they have new flavors too. So oh. now not only do they have cocoa fruity frosted peanut butter, the blueberry cinnamon, but now they have cookies and cream and maple waffle. Oh my oh. God, it's so good. Subscribe today to Flavors You Love and you can get cereal shipped to your doorstep. Not to mention saving more than 25% on every order. You can choose four flavors you love, edit your subscription to switch it up and keep yourself stocked up on cereal. Okay, favorite flavors. One, two, three, go. Fruity. Yeah, I'm going to say cookies and cream. It just sounds right at my I'm a frosty alley. gal forever. I keep it simple. You guys can go to magicspoon.com slash Tuesday5 or use our promo code Tuesday5, F-I-V-E, spell it out, at checkout to get $5 off your order and try it today. Remember, if you subscribe to Magic Spoon, you get $5 off on top of the 25% savings from subscribing. That's a big deal. And Magic Spoon is so confident in their product, it's backed with a 100% happiness guarantee. So if you don't like it for any reason, they'll refund your money, no questions asked. Remember, subscribe and get your delicious guilt-free cereal on the regular at magicspoon.com slash Tuesday5 and use the code Tuesday5, spell it out, F-I-V-E, to save big. Thank you, Magic Spoon, for sponsoring this episode. We love you. You guys, today's episode is sponsored by Manscaped, which is perfect for today, I mm -hmm. think. Manscaped, the leaders in men's below-the-waist grooming. It's back-to-school time, and we want to make sure your man is packing the essential stab his best year yet. The Manscaped fourth-generation performance package is just that. Get him the valedictorian of ball trimming so he can join 2 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped by going to manscaped.com code trash and guys listen not only did i dress up like my boyfriend but i <laughs> did shave my balls just like him and that was with manscaped <laughs> and they look good this package includes a brand new lawnmower 4.0 and will give him the confidence to do anything you desire send him to smooth balls university to learn a thing or two i'm okay with hair but just Tame. Deuce, yeah, t tame it a little bit. I Listen, I remember hooking up with this bartender in college and I was blowing him in the bathroom at work. Um, and he, at one point, I needed to get my sea legs because I was a little drunk. And so I went over and he started jerking off and I was like, I guess I'll just, and he didn't want me back. I was like, oh no, that's not a good sign. So I just sat there and it was like, I just was pretty much flossing my teeth with his pubes. He, this was before Manscaped. And I'll tell you, I really wish Manscaped had been there. You guys, don't be Annie's bathroom rando with your long ass pubes and get Manscaped. You guys can get 20% off plus free shipping with the code TRASH at manscaped.com. That's 20% off plus free shipping with the code TRASH at manscaped.com. This year, have your man graduate with a degree in clean balls from Manscaped. Oh, finally, a graduate. Here's something you might have missed from last week's episode. As did Esther tell you that without us, Annie, that she has started taking edibles. <laughs> this the outfit is becoming more. <laughs> now you're just taking them. You are better. <laughs> Everyone says that. I did. I did start taking edibles, and it is weird. And I have so much. There's so much. All right, I can't wait for us to get. Up. Okay, oh, that's, that's the my... plan. I'm strictly yeah. with the gummies. Oh my god! I know it's. Really I can weird. only imagine how many you take because they taste good. <laughs> <laughs> my tolerance. Oh is really my high god! She, does, she went up to ten. Five hundred pounds. She went up to ten. She went up. Didn't she go up to ten? Yeah. Now, are we going to do a thing where we see how high we can go? No. Oh, no. let's not play that game. Because I, I will start to... speaking Korean. Just... No. <laughs> Amazing. If yeah. I start speaking Korean, we know I'm fucked up. <laughs> now I okay, wait. So I was thinking, what if we just had like a medic with us? My sister, she's a nurse. Happened to you? My, my sister. Because you're not actually like you might just freak out. But if you hadn't, wouldn't if you had a nurse going, you're fine. Yeah, but what are you trying to do? Have the most fun we could have. <laughs> okay. Just make I it. I like the really sound of weird. that. We were too just high. Let it go control. But I really, I was thinking about you in the ayahuasca trip. I was just. Sending you love. I was like, I don't need to tell her, but I did tell I'm telling you. <laughs> just sending you love. And just, Thank you. you know. I want to do something different. I want to be on three different drugs, Ooh. each of us, and see if we ever align at any point. <laughs> like you can take a, I could take a psychedelic. You can take an edible. No, I can drink. Oh. You take mushrooms. You take an edible. The I wonder if we is, can meet in a place. I'm that's, down. I'm super down for that. But I also really want to, because will an edible? What does it? What will an, what will pot do? Do you do if you do a lot? Will you get like silly fun? Because that's what I want. I don't want the like 
Abe, man, like I'm just in my couch. Like, I don't want that. You don't want to be the couch girl from that ad? Remember that commercial? <laughs> Where she smokes weed. She's like, nothing happens when I smoke weed. Nothing happens. And then she's the couch. <laughs> <laughs> like, will you get fun and silly? Yeah. Okay. I never, there's never been a drug that's taken and me And he's probably fun and silly in ayahuasca. I, was, I did have some good ones. Someone was like taking their second cup and they're like, oh my God, my gag reflex. I'm like, well, good thing I got rid of that in college. You know, like I was <laughs> doing my jokes. And then also like we all got tested and everything. And this was weeks ago, so I didn't get it. But but part of the ceremony is he like spits like this like rose. I was crying laughing. Like he was spitting in our faces. I was like, guys, this is like the opposite of like what has been happening for the past <laughs> Did it feel exhilarating to get spat on though? It was how amazing. It's a pandemic? It's my, my shaman, I'm now in love with my gay shaman. Like I, I really have like very romantic, loving feelings towards him, and I, I did offer him sexual favors. Shut afterwards. up. You did. I mean, I love. He's. I met him on stage. He told me it was love at first sight. He saw me on stage. I was his favorite. I do wonder that store. sometimes I feel like at some point in my life I felt very deeply connected to someone I probably wasn't sexually connected with. Yeah, but like I mean, the I romantic be feelings down. were there. I would I, be like, Todd, you have to let me as my shaman. Wait, I, mean, I feel something different. Like, I, I want to look into this because I feel such a deep connection with my friend John. I know you're going to make fun of me, but there's nothing romantic and nothing sexual. But mm -hmm. it's just like, I just like, I always, I'm like, John, I love you. Can I offer an option? Yeah. It's two gay people <laughs> in the closet hanging out. <laughs> <laughs> but is that way? Like, do you know what I'm saying? Like, you just like, I just love you, but it's not sexual or romantic. Yeah. I have. I but have it sounds it. like yours is, is that? Do you, are you not having that with? <laughs> with <laughs> <us. not. laughs> True. But with a guy, it just seems a little different. I have guy friends that I have no sexual. I mean, most of them, honestly. Yeah, yeah. most of them. Really. Yeah. It's just I'm like, if I wanted there. to of fuck course. you, I would have fucked you. I know. Say, I, I know. I have that policy, too. Okay, so. <laughs> I'll remember more of the ayahuasca trip in, in a little bit. But I, so I'm watching, I was watching a clip of a podcast and I had one of my uh, exes. Are you going to say who? No. But you'll say it to us right now. But you'll yeah, give me the is. look. Okay. So this was a guy that I had dated on and off, like kind of friend zoned me, really anxiously attached, like very gaslighty situation, like really like where I was like, are you fucking playing me? You're fucking playing me. Yeah. Like I didn't, wasn't into him. I was, he was, we were like a little flirty in the beginning when we were friends and that was like kind of fun but then he started like holding my hand in public holding my hand at comedy clubs which is work and i was like dude no what are you doing i had just broken up with a comic and a mutual friend of ours and i and i was like what are you doing like i this is like really like it, it was just like my boundaries were crossed it was just like why are you doing this in front of people this is weird i don't know what the future of this is i don't feel like coming out as someone that's like dating you i have i my spidey sense is up that you're playing me hmm and he's like, no, no, that's not it. I'm just like you. Taking me out on dates, driving me around, taking me up to his house in the hills. Like, just really, like, flattering me, just love bombing mm -hmm. me, all of this stuff. And then um, we had, like, fucked once. And then after we fucked, he, oh, he was getting texts from, he was dating this actress, which, by the way, I think he went on one date with her. But he had kept telling me about this when yeah. we were first friends, this actress he was dating. And he would like be like, oh, help me get make text her and stuff in the beginning. And I'm like, I don't want to help you text her. Who cares? Yeah. Um, and then like and our date, we had gone shopping for clothes because I just broke it up with my boyfriend. He's like, I need new clothes. So I was like, oh, I'll take you shopping. I have girlfriend energy. Took him shopping. Like uh, there were all these like little parts. Right. And I was just like, we're friends. We have fun. Like whatever. Maybe we'll bang one time someday or whatever. But nothing like we're going to be boyfriend yeah. and girlfriend. He. Um, Shows me those texts the first time we bang. So now he's making it like we're going to be bo boyfriend and girlfriend. Okay. Yeah. Now before we bang, it's like there's been all of this like flirting. He's picking yeah. me up. We sit in his car for hours at night. We He calls me in the morning. We call at night. Um, like hanging out in his hot tub. Like there's just like all of these. Like mm -hmm. it was just like. Feels like it's gearing up. We're to... starting to be a yeah. boyfriend and girlfriend. Yeah. Which I was like I resisted it. But he like he broke down my walls and. And then when we were banging the first time, it was like we had gone to we were supposed to go to a meeting together because I'm codependent. And every time I fucking date someone, I'm like, come to my business meeting with me. Wait, what? <laughs> yeah, I'm like, oh, these guys can probably help your career, too. Um, and then they're like, why are meeting. you both here? They're like, why are you both here? <laughs> um, but anyway, so we went to the wrong place. We like his GPS just took us to like the beach accidentally. Mm -hmm. That's weird. <laughs> Oh my God, he played me so hard. So then we were just like at the beach with all this time to kill. And we were like on the beach and he was like rubbing my ass and stuff. And it was just like, 
okay, so we're like romantically. And then when we made out, there was no chemistry. Oh, but shit. I was like, well, whatever, we'll see, you know, like, but I was like, I still was like, I'm not like, he's trying to be my boyfriend. I don't know. Like, but when you kissed, you weren't, it wasn't there. It wasn't there. like, it, it never Didn't was feel. really there like that, you know, but I did feel so into him because yeah. of these like little things he was doing. But I didn't really like fully know that yet. I was just in the process mm -hmm. of being played. So we're like driving back and I was like, all right, I just want to say something. I am like very uncomfortable with this situation. Like I'm down to like go like see how it goes. And like yeah. I wasn't like like necessarily going to fuck him yeah. or whatever. But I was like. You know, I am really, I just got out of this relationship, this public relationship with a comic. Yeah. I, I really, it was very like intense and like love him, but very traumatic. Yeah. <laughs> it was like a lot. You were like not ready to go into I really like that again. was not ready to do that. And I certainly wasn't ready to do like a comedian thing publicly, right? And he was like, and I was like, and I don't trust you. Yeah. Like, I just don't trust something about you. And he was like, well, there's, you can trust me. And, um, you know, I'm also apprehensive of dating a comic and stuff, yeah. but you know, and I was like, yeah, so I was like, was I guess we're doing just it all saying it all. Like he was, right. there was a formula there exactly. yeah. he was hitting all the points, but I'm not, I'm like, I'm feeling it a little bit, yeah. but I'm like not, but he's telling me like, no, I'm just like, this is where we're at. Like, this is just the moment yeah. of like how we feel or whatever. And I'm like, okay. And it was nice. He was a lot nicer than my boyfriend before. So I was like, okay. Aren't they he had all like the nice beginning? things at a house and a nice car and stuff. Yeah. We drove back to his place. We were like hooking up. And I was like, I don't think we should bang. And he like laughed. And then I was like, all right, yeah, you're right. Let's just bang. Um, but I like, whatever. Who yeah. cares? So we bang. And it was like pretty good. There was like potential to have like good sex in the future. But it was like. First you know, bang new. is always a dud. Yeah. And yeah. it's just like awkward. It's like. Yeah. Uh, I, so, so someone's hitting someone's nose. Yes. Someone's hit, bumping teeth. Yeah. Yes, teeth. My teeth are touching your teeth. You just Why? got the rhythms yeah. off. You don't rhythm, know. Like, you don't know how the other moves, how right. the other likes. It's just, but it was, yeah. first it was, bang is horrible. It was better <laughs> than I thought it would be from the kiss, right? Yeah. Like, but he was so like, kind of like distant and weird. It's like, I get really like, I'm like a hippie. Like, I really like open the fuck up, even if I'm just fucking someone. Like, yeah. I'm like, we're this is going to be like a connection. That's like why I'm here. So in the middle of it, he gets a text. I don't even like pay attention or whatever. But later he's like, oh, that was the actress texting me. Like how awkward. Why would she even and I'm say like, anything? Right, but I was like, but it didn't even, I was like, oh, I was like, yeah, but even if she's like a famous actress, like I'm Annie Letterman, I'm yeah, hilarious gross. and the best. Like, why would you, I'm, I've, she ain't making you laugh, bitch. Like, I just was like, no, like it just didn't even like compute. You're like, it was Esther Pavitsky. It was <laughs> Esther, this famous actress. She's <laughs> not gonna make you laugh. <laughs> <laughs> the next morning he goes, I said something about my ex-boyfriend. We were friends with him and I was very recently out of the relationship. So I was still like talking about it because mm -hmm. I was still kind of in it. I mean, I was like, two weeks out probably three weeks out and um and i go oh like he used to do this thing so like thank you for not doing that like i didn't get screamed at this morning like to make breakfast or something and um he was like um oh we'll have to make sure the next guy you date isn't like that mm. and i'm like this motherfucker what? who says something like that why like literally had this conversation one million times so then i just like i'm silent he drives me I'm, like he drops me off i'm like peace um, don't talk to him. Then he calls me like he calls me like a day later or whatever, and he's like, "Oh my god, this crazy thing happened." He's like, "Tell me a story." Trying as to if, pretend as like as nothing, nothing happened. happened, right? Like, it's, and then and I didn't say anything because literally that's been my problem in life. I feel afraid to say like how I feel. Yeah, it builds up. I blow up. Like, yeah. And it's I. I that was another thing I learned in the ayahuasca where it's like boundaries can be very easy, nice, not a big deal. Mm -hmm. You can have everything you want if you just like let people know what you need. That's mm -hmm. it. And um. And then he takes me out on a date. He goes, I'm gonna take you on a date. Or he goes, I'm gonna take you to, my friend's proposing to his friend at a comedy club. Takes me to the comedy club. We watch his friend propose to a girl. He introduces me, like the guy's like, oh, your girl's, like everyone's like assuming I'm his girlfriend, yeah. right? It's so like, like avoiding banging me. He's, he's tired, he's busy, he was working on something. But it was just like. He's you like don't... still hanging out with you, but there's no no sex But he's not hanging out with me. He's not hanging out with me at night. He's, no, he's, he's, he's not, not hanging, hanging out with me at night. You, he's, showing you around you are to right. me it sounds like he's bearding you yeah like what? you're his beard right but he's show like like i'm hot <laughs> i'm funny i'm like yeah, i'm his go i'm his uh soul patch that happens and then i finally have a conversation with him where i go dude you're like making me feel bad like i don't like this like you you aren't like you're not you're 
you're staying in touch with me. You're you're too busy to see me. You're not giving me compliments. Like I gave you like my body. Like you need to like have a reaction to that. Mm -hmm. I'm not like I don't just like. I'm not like a drunk. I'm not. I'm sober. Mm -hmm. I'm here. I'm like mm -hmm. if I'm if you're gonna like ask me to open up to you and then I do, you need to like yeah acknowledge it and whatever. And he was like, well, I was talking to my friend about how like hot you are and how much I like you. And mm -hmm. he's like, I really want them to meet you. What? So he was like, why don't you go bowling with me and my friends? And I was like, I mean, <laughs> Wait, I this guess. this is weird. This I is guess. getting so weird. And I'm like, my ex-boyfriend was in town. I fucked him. Like, it wasn't like I was like exclusively like with this guy, you know, but it was like, it did feel like it was, I was like, I better fuck my ex-boyfriend before we, you know? I really like you. Um, let's, you know, the whole, right. uh, bowling? So then, but why am I meeting your friends? And bowling is like the worst date. It's such a nightmare. It's but like all so far, so everywhere he's I'm taking you. I'm shoes. Like, I know. I'm not in my own shoes. I can't same. comfortably bowl with someone unless I've been dating them for 10 years. Like, like how bored do you have to be already Well, here's the bowling. thing about bowling. Here's bowling the thing about like when you, like, when you don't space. get a single pin right yeah and the the walk of shame when you turn your uh -huh. body around to face the crowd of people who are like it's all right also it's all right it's really a horrible feeling you're right and this goes without saying this goes without saying he obviously was a very good of player. course he <laughs> was right. so okay so then i this is actually so good i'm telling this story because it leads into what we were just talking about okay so then we go like we go to the bowling thing and I'm before we go bowling I'm like I'm annoyed with you. I'm at the I'm at the comedy store on the phone with him like the night before and I go I don't like this. You this this doesn't feel right. I don't like this. I was like you're like doing this push and pull thing with me and now acting like I'm like cuz he goes, "Oh, I just want to let you know before we go on this date, I am still seeing other people." That's oh, what it was that pissed okay. me off. And I went I went, I like fucked my ex boyfriend the night before. I'm like, I go, yeah, why are you telling me this? Like, yeah. what? Like, I'm like, you're the one, you're literally making me meet your friends right now. Yeah, like, dude. Why the moment before are you like now? By the way. It was just so, and I'm like, and now you're gross. treating me. And he goes, I haven't done anything wrong. And I'm like, you're treating me like now I'm this needy girl. Like, you fucking set this whole thing yeah. up. So then I go, so we go bowling and I'm so annoyed. I'm like so mad the whole time because I'm like, I am a fucking, I'm like, do you know what my DMs are, dude? Like, do you know how yeah. sought after I am? And you're treating me like I'm this like fucking nothing. Hottie, hottie also yeah, like that. Just trying to get you get you excited. Also, Annie, did you did you throw a couple strikes in there? I did app? all right, I did okay. all right. I always do okay. Really? Not consistent, but I, I get in there sometimes. I guess you look like a good bowler. <laughs> <laughs> I look like I could stick my fingers in all your holes. Andy. And make what needs to happen, happen. <laughs> <laughs> Knock down your pins, bitch. <laughs> but anyway, so then, okay, so at the end of the thing, I go, I am too good for this situation. I like his friends see us like fighting and stuff. Like in this, I go, I need you. You are the boy and I am the girl. I am not, you are not going to get me into a situation. Just a weird thing for you to say right now. <laughs> <laughs> just, it's just awkward, honestly. <laughs> You're just delusional. <laughs> Look, I could titty fuck guys. Oh my God. Um, but so we go. Um, so you you say that to him. I say that to him, and then when I leave, he texts me. He's like, "Do you want to go on a date?" This so I'm like, "Okay," but I'm still, still so annoyed, right? So then I go do a set at the in the main room at the comedy store, and I'm annoyed. I do the set, but I'm like raw, you know. And I get off stage, and I see these two people sitting there, and they're like, "This guy is glowing." There's this man is just beautiful, glowing man. And I just like high five him. And then later I was staying really late. It was like right after Brody died and it was like a weird time. So it was like chain smoking cigarettes, staying late. This was like two weeks after. And I'm like, I just like couldn't leave. I felt really drawn to stay at the club. The one of the guys that works there was like, oh, my friend wanted to meet you. You high fived him. And I was like, oh, mm. really? Like, cool. He goes, he, you're his favorite comedian. He's been here twice and you're his favorite. And I was like, oh, he must be trying to fuck me. Or as B. Esther's mom. <laughs> and he was like, which is not mutually exclusive. <laughs> Maybe both of them are. Maybe your parents want to have a threesome with me. No, stop, 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 stop. <laughs> Every time I miss him, by the way. Um, I miss his uh, sexual attention. <laughs> Hi, Mary. Love you. Sorry. Thank you for being a fan. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm going to send you a shirt for free. Sign it. Esther sucks. Anyone who drinks wine knows that the options are limitless, which is why finding a wine I like can be a hit or miss. I like to drink Chard, and my God, when I'm at the Trader Joe's aisle, I'm just like, nope, I can't decide. I don't know how to do it. And I just blindly pick one. I don't even know if I'm going to like it or not. But now 
that I'm a First Leaf Wine Club member, I only, George, listen to this, I only get the hits. That's because expert at First Leaf who know my personal palate send wines I love right to my door. There's nothing... There's always something new to discover. First Leaf is a wine club that curates and ships wines that are perfect for you. And since they work with renowned winemakers all over the world, there's virtually no limit to the variety of wines you get to try. Not only does First Leaf introduce you to a ton of new wine, each box gets better. When you rate the wine you receive, First Leaf learns more about your palate. Here's a fun little not so secret about First Leaf. They work directly with winemakers, which means you get incredible wine 60% off of retail. That's unheard of. First Leaf is so confident you'll love the wine. They have a... They have a 100% satisfaction guarantee. If you receive a bottle that isn't exactly what you were hoping for, First Leaf will credit your account. Join today and you'll get six bottles of wine for $29.95. That's only $29.95. And free shipping on top of that. Just go to tryfirstleaf.com slash Tuesday. That's six bottles of wine for $29.95 and free shipping at tryfirstleaf.com slash Tuesday. Let's talk about Blue Chew. Please. <laughs> Confidence can take you far in life and it can also help in the bedroom, especially when it comes time to step up to the plate. And that's where Blue Chew comes in. Blue Chew is a unique online service that delivers the same active ingredients as Viagra and Cialis, but in chewable tablets and at a fraction of the cost. You can take them any time, day or night, so you can plan ahead and be ready for whatever opportunities arise. The process is simple. Sign up at bluechew.com, consult with one of their licensed medical providers, and once you're approved, you'll receive your prescription within days. The best part, it's all done online. So no visits to the doctor's office, no awkward conversations, and no waiting in line at the pharmacy. Blue Chew's tablets are made in the USA and prepared and shipped direct to your door in a discreet package. Very important. I realize that Blue Chew is a male product, but I'm just going to say this. I come like this, right? Like this. If I were a dude, I'd be in trouble. Yeah. If I were a dude, I would be on that blue chew so fast. Yeah, chew it. You don't have to swallow it. Literally, you don't have to swallow a pill. You chew it and you boing, boing, boing. Boing, boing. So if you could benefit from extra confidence when it's time to perform, blue chew can help. And we've got a special deal for our listeners. Try Blue Chew free when you use our promo code TUESDAY at checkout. Just pay $5 shipping. That's bluechew.com promo code TUESDAY to receive your first month free. Visit bluechew.com for more details and important safety information. And we thank Blue Chew for sponsoring this podcast. We are giving you free boners. You're welcome. Ladies, Blue Chew is exclusively for men, but the end result is something you'll both enjoy. So get your man to sign up today. No shame in it. We support it. We love it. So he like, and he was like, you know, but I just like, I'm not like available to like be a boyfriend or whatever. And I'm just like, yeah, but you um, are, acting. are yeah. Yeah. my boyfriend. You've been available. Like you're my boyfriend. Why is my toothbrush here? Like, why are you? Oh, God. And then, you know, we ended up finally just like, I can't remember how. It definitely, there was a screaming on the street because he wouldn't pay for my parking. I went to help him with something, something he wanted to do. I went to help him with it and I agreed to help him. That's fine. Mm -hmm. But let's keep in mind, he doesn't pay me. He doesn't um, do anything for me yeah. financially. And this is helping him and his yeah. career. I would wake up and think about ideas for him. Like I was so caught up in him. And um, But silver lining is, you know, the shaman showed up. Yeah. And, Dude, my the fucking sound guy at the comedy store once pulled me aside and was like, because he sits in this booth that the God booth and looks yeah. down. He goes, what the fuck? Are, he goes, you need to get the fuck away from this guy. He goes, I see you come in, you film his sets, you help him, you do all this stuff for him. He's never done one thing for you. Holy shit. And I go, no, he helps me too. And he goes, no, he doesn't. And I go, well, my sets are later. He's tired. He goes, I'm tired. But when I'm working with someone and it's an equal partnership, I help them. Mm -hmm. Was it Danny? Yeah, it was Danny. And he goes, this is your time. This is this is yours. Mm -hmm. He's like, do not give it to him. Wow, that's so great, great advice. My first year at the store, Danny, I remember used to, he hated the guy I was dating. And so he hated me too. It's just funny that he was nice to you. I love Danny. <laughs> he was so mean I love to Danny us. even more now. I like him now though, but. You know, I was like a 21-year-old idiot. Well, he probably saw you being dragged into that world. You were yeah. a different girl. I was very different. <laughs> Tits were out. I just want to announce. Tits were out, guys. <laughs> I just want to happily announce that my pussy works again. Yeah. Okay, what was Is it because of my story? 
please clap harder than that, George? No, no, no. I didn't know it wasn't working. Can someone help I me? I think that these di- weeks off really fucking. Can thought. someone help me? <laughs> well, no. I think we were we were talking about it. We talked about it in passing. How I just like my. I shut well, it's down. It's sad when you have to like, like you have to pity down. fuck yourself and you're like, oh, I guess let's. Yeah, do like this. I stopped <laughs> even wanting to like masturbate. Right. Okay, so you just weren't like. Turned I stopped on. wanting to. Yeah, it was just this thing. It just completely shut For down. How long? I wouldn't even think. I wouldn't look at somebody, anybody else. Like there was nothing in you my body. You know how normal that, that is. Yeah. But it lasted a long How time, long? Esther. Try I love me. Esther telling us was normal. <laughs> fucking weirdo. <laughs> Try me. Two years. The whole two years. Well, it's years. pandemic. I, it's two years. Pandemic. I did not masturbate. Do you know how it's long that is? the pandemic. It's a, the most stressful shit, dude. It's stressful. You're in a fight or flight right now. Did you wake it up recently? Is that what I we're woke talking? it the fuck up, It was Esther. that episode where you touched her vagina. <laughs> I like, took one look at you in this get up <laughs> and my pussy woke up again. What if it was wet when she got up? There's a puddle. <laughs> How happy would you be? Would you leave Dave? You'd throw the, the tube to the wind. <laughs> I wonder if we could work something now, like where I, Dave and I are, you and Bobby are a unit, me and Dave are a unit, but there's like swapping going on. Because I feel like Dave and Bobby could have some fun just hanging out. Uh, oh, they meant swapping. Sexually? No, no. Oh, Esther. Oh, wait, so you want to go on I a thought double this was date pineapple. Without- Oh, no. Oh, no, no. Did you just propose that? Oh, it's just a hand. This wasn't a date. Oh, no, 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 no. It it's wasn't a, a date. It was like a lifestyle. Wait a second. So we're not pineapple. And you guys videotape it and then my boyfriend edits it? Okay, I see. <laughs> I would mystery science theater it. It actually sounds great. You guys Pussy hang works out. Now we should hang out more. Wait, are we That's- pineappling? <laughs> are we swinging? Yes, but you and I are being sexual and the guys are playing video games. <laughs> okay, I got but it. But they're both a little. They could. No. I think Bobby, Bobby would. would. You'd be, ca- be careful, Dave, because Bobby would. Dave would not. I don't think Dave would either. No, Dave is very. Would is Todd? Dave good would with Todd? Boundaries though, because no, Todd would not. I know Todd, Todd doesn't would seem not. like he would ever. Todd's a straight boy. So then maybe it does need to be. A th- I, okay, there's some sort of. Here's what I'm manifesting. He's a father peer pressure, my boyfriend. But does Dave? Does Dave fall- like if let's say like Judd Apatow was like Dave? No, Dave is not. Dave is like very straight. Yeah. No, but it's not that he's not straight. It's how susceptible because Bobby's really the only one we're saying would just enjoy it. Enjoy it fully. But well, Dave is very be- straight, but he does have a big brother. He, we always say like he has he has a big brother complex, and I have a big sister complex. Like we're both. Is that like- why he has long hair and you dress like a boy? <laughs> <laughs> like he, if there's like an older like guy, he'll he does get really like excited about feeling like a brother with someone. He gets like really excited. Do your guys do this? Like they get really excited to hang oh, out with like a cool guy. Um, Bobby in a very submissive way he does. I feel like Dave would like Dave is when like when Bobby comes up, Dave is like, oh, Bobby's cool. Like he's like wants to play with Bobby. I guess. Yeah. Bobby can be like that sometimes. Todd just hangs back and the cool people come to him. It yeah, really it's true. Todd. OK, so Todd's having his 10 year high school reunion. Oh my God, he's so young. <laughs> oh, my God. You're a child monster. I was literally sucking a dick between the towers. Finally. I was like, I was a grown up when that happened. Um, he was born the year Kurt Cobain died. Anyway, so oh my god, yeah, like that guy, that baby is like older than my Todd. boyfriend. That baby's like well older than. Are you gonna baby. go to the reunion? You no. gotta go. But he said, but he te- he he posted and he goes, hey, sorry guys, I'm not gonna. Um, I know that you guys know I'm friends with Olivia Munn. But I'm not going to be able. She's not going to be able to come. I know you guys were hoping she would. She's pregnant, so uh, I'll try to get one of my other celebrity friends to come. Oh no, he goes hey guys, because he was voted class comedian. So he goes, hey guys, it's class comedian here. And then he goes, says the Olivia Munn thing, and then he posts the thing in the Daily Mail of him with Olivia Munn. Todd got in a picture and uh, paparazzi a paparazzi picture where I was there, but I was like behind the car, so it literally looks like Olivia Munn is driving, is dating your boyfriend, is dating my boyfriend, but also like. Ha, like bought a plant that's in the front seat so he's got to sit in the back or something you know like there's a reason he's in the back but he's holding my dog my dog and my boyfriend were in the picture it was so funny but and then he posted that picture it's literally the funniest thing oh my gosh <laughs> we're so all over the place today but there's so much like i'm like enjoying it but i'm like wait what was that like wait can i tell you though that i saw him lay out the guy that played me i saw him lay out how to get a girl on a podcast. Okay, so that's what triggered this. And it was this. all the same. Shut up. Yeah, because I'm not uh, triggered. I don't give a shit about him. I'm fine when I see wait, him. Wait, stop tell, it. He, tell us. Okay. This is what I wanted to know. He goes, um, when a guy 
um, or when a girl likes you, never like ask her on a date or anything. So like, hang on I one was, second. Wait, you wait, just wait. heard him on a podcast. There was a clip that some, I don't follow him. Yeah. Like, and by the way, this person, love and light, like legit. Like, yeah. When I see him, it's like, ha, huh, fun. We've done enough. Like, it's just, it's over. It's not, Yeah. it's not even bad. Fe- I think he is just like, uh, He's got troubles and he's has a way of getting people that I don't even think he means to do it. He yeah. Yeah. people in, And uh, that's just how it is. So like some kid calls. And then so he's like, OK, if you want to get out of the friend zone, you have to make them know about another girl that's really into you. Yeah. Yeah. OK. And then like have her like help you with the girl. Shut up. And then yeah. And then have like show her all the texts from the this girl. This is like the OJ book. If I did it. <laughs> it's like this. So- was- <laughs> yes. Keep going. The Factor. Still obsessed with OJ. <laughs> I've moved on to a new American tragedy. Oh, my God. Okay, keep going. I can't remember. There was like some other thing, but it was like, and the panties will drop or whatever. It's just like. <gasps> I hate oh. that shit. It's just so fucking annoying because it's well, like, I knew it was happening. I was denying it the whole time. Like, I'm telling you, like a year later, I was like, here's my issue. If you knew you weren't going to be my boyfriend, don't come at me as a boyfriend. I don't fucking care. I wasn't trying yeah. to be your girlfriend. You played me. You were dishonest with me. And that fucking, I'm never getting over that. Like in this friendship, I'm always going to need another apology. Like it's never going to be enough. And he was like, well, I mean, um, he's like, I could not fuck you. I was just like so into you. Like, it's like, no, mm. Mm. like, fuck you. I, cause I would have been down if he was clear about it too. I probably would have just banged him and it would have been I mean, here's, like a, get it out of the way. The fact that he even has rules or yeah. bullet points or a fucking By PowerPoint the way, presentation, <laughs> how to fucking get a woman to yeah, fall no. for you and you not reciprocate is sociopathic. That doesn't, doesn't seem good. Me. Yeah, I'll that tape you. Oh no. So I'm watching uh, Annie spinning around, round, round and round. I do see a Dance nipple. Dance for me, baby. Dance for papa. No. Oh, my God. Ah! Ah! Oh, my God. You got it. Annie, just put Tad, um, Todd's hat back on, but not your top. Okay. No, we'll just blur no. it the whole episode. Oh, yeah, Shut up. You? Well, I'm doing, you guys know I'm doing a hustler shoot, right? Well, what you're, you're making up for mean? the... You're making up for the Miss Lingerie episode. This is what we get. No, after. I'm going to do lingerie when you guys least expect it. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are going to look like shit and I'm going to come in so hot. When you least expect it makes me feel like at midnight tonight, my doorbell's going to ring. <laughs> oh, you gonna... wish, bitch. I love how it's always something where you're getting banged. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my worst nightmare. All these girls come over and finger me. Oh. <laughs> Wait, what's your hustler shoot? Tell us. More. I'm doing. They're doing a six page shoot on me spread, um, <laughs> and like I don't have to be naked yeah, or anything. But of course, um, I'm trying to figure it out. But I do want to. I know this is for offline, but I do want to get serious about pinning an edible sleepover night, mm-hmm. a Vegas night. There's another thing I want to do, which I've talked to you guys about. Like I'm manifesting. I want us to go to like a Malibu boot camp retreat together. Okay, I'm down. With got, that. I've got. A Wait, lot. is that exercise or what yeah. kind of boot camp? Yeah. Oh, please. <laughs> I've got big plans. It's for just us. rehab for you. <laughs> We're all, it's already an intervention you've started for yourself. <laughs> but I. She's a weed addict. Help. I do want to. We haven't quite talked about the Bobby Lee look, and I would love to talk about it. It's really, such a good look. I think that Esther and I have both used at points in our lives. Yeah. I think that Bobby is sort of a style icon. He I never so. goes with trends. He likes what he likes and he just flies with it. And, and I it love evolves. that about him. Same. Yeah, it's like I yesterday, like my mom, he wore head to toe different tones of green. That's like so head cool. to toe. And he was like, Ma, do I look good? She's like, you look like a grasshopper. <laughs> And he went and he was just, I don't know, he just gets it. Some people have it internally to like be that kind of like fashionable. He has the instincts. Yes. And his body and everything looks good on him. I know. Yeah. He really is cool. Yeah. He really is cool. I, I, it's so true. It's, it's hard for a comedian to look cool in clothes. Like that's not mm-hmm. common. But he has his own thing going on. Why did you pick... The glasses, the beanie. I feel like is this like this is his iconic look. Yeah, I feel like, I mean, this jersey. I feel like he's worn a couple times on Bad Friends. He likes a good, um, comfortable camo. Are his clothes tight on you? Not really. Here are the pants. Are Dave's tight on you? 
I wish they were bigger on me. <laughs> um, but no, his clothes fit me perfectly. That's so. Wow. That's why we share clothes. I mean, I I guess I him and I dress so similarly, so similarly. Who took from who? We take from each other because some there are some things that I buy that he's like I fucking love that. Let me have that, and we fight, we tussle, and then we both end up wearing it. But um, he does take from my closet a lot because wow. I have some really cool vintage tees too. Yeah, you do. Because I used to live on 4th Street, close to 4th Street in Long Beach, and they have the best vintage stuff there. So he would always take my shit. So it's like we're half-half on the, the good vintage t-shirts. This is, I I was, Dave actually texted me information about my outfit this morning. I have not read it. <laughs> and I should read it to you guys. Remember Dave was actually trying to help me take that guy on a shop. Remember he was trying to find the place to go shopping with that oh, guy? Oh, Yeah. Dave was Dave was a, an accomplice. Oh my god, it's so pathetic. Okay, he said the shirt is a is wardrobe from a music video that he helped out on years ago that his friend Mike directed, and the video is based on a chapter from the book Infinite Jest, which takes oh place. Oh my god, Dave! At a, a fictional tennis academy. So this is a tennis. <laughs> the hat is a Red Sox hat, but featuring their secondary logo. And the pants are Uniqlo and the belt is his backup belt because he can't find his favorite belt ever since my dad <laughs> borrowed it. <laughs> Your dad borrowed his belt? And the sock. Oh, I forgot the sock. Dave is a sock guy. Yeah, my dad. Dave keeps saying that he thinks my dad stole his belt. And I asked my dad and I don't think I got a clear answer. I genuinely don't know. But when my dad was visiting, he forgot a belt. And then there's no belt. <laughs> yeah. It could just be in your room. Totally. <laughs> <laughs> You guys, it's been sort of a rough week. Bobby, um, Bobby woke up and he was really bummed. He was like, Norm Aww. passed away. And um, I think what's sad is that like sort of no one knew and he feels as though like. No one knew he was sick. Yeah, no one knew he was I sick. I think that's gangster. I'm it is pretty gangster, yeah. I, look, I respect anyone's decision on how to handle things. I think it would be gangster to share, gangster not to share. But I also that feel like true. the reason I, this is my theory, obviously I don't know. The reason he was able to live for nine years with it is because his identity wasn't I'm like a cancer guy. Like yeah. if you have that identity and people are saying that to you, you're going to get I, I believe that you will you're convincing yourself to get sicker. Well, does anyone know what kind of cancer he had? Mm -mm. Mm -mm. No. Yeah, it's really sad. He's definitely like the comedian's comedian like i feel like every year he's like your favorite comedian's he's favorite so good, comedian yeah. and he's probably your like he's just i i feel like i had a weird do you know about my i had like a weird relationship with norm mcdonald's <laughs> have we us. talked about this maybe i don't know remind me i feel like you know this it was like weird for a while is he your dad no <laughs> he's so much he's my dad's favorite and he's so much yeah. like my dad gambling oh he wanted to bang me <laughs> <laughs> no but when i so years ago i did last comic standing and the judges were roseanne bar awayans i never know which one and that doesn't make me racist please <laughs> please <laughs> lord <laughs> hashtag not racist okay i feel like i've talked about this before and norm mm -hmm. mcdonald was one of the judges and when we did the show, the producers, it was produced by Wanda Sykes and her producing partner, this woman, Paige Horace, who's awesome. And Wanda and Paige were like, you guys, we're producing Last Comic Standing our way. This is a comedian's air. Like, this is safe, a space, safe space for comedians. This isn't like American Idol. No one's going to like tear you down. It's going to be all constructive, positive. And so I'm like, great. I go out. I do my first set. The judges like me. Like, I go to the next round. And then I'm at my second taping and I was new to comedy. So I didn't really have like a second well, five minutes. This? I don't know. Maybe 2013. Okay. I really don't know. I was just testing you. Like, Make sure if you were really new. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't that new. Yeah. Um, and so I do my second set and it's uh, it's like obviously not as good as the first one. And like Roseanne and like the first two judges are like, they're like positive, right? Because that's what the, and then Norm hits me out of nowhere with like, I this is the biggest disappointment of my night. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm so caught off. He is off, like your dad. I'm so caught off guard. And then he starts like rewording my joke, like trying to like fix it. And for some reason, I just go straight to like teenager, teenage girl fight back mode, like how I was when I was younger. And I was just like, if I, I just went after him, I was like, really norm like i'm the biggest disappointment of your night like fuck you like you might then that i 
you must have a great life. Yeah. And you're rewording my jokes as if that makes any sense. Like, you know, I don't need to hear this from my dad's favorite comedian. Like, I just went off on him. And the audience. I like that when you were going off, you still complimented him. <laughs> <laughs> but I was, was so like, oh. worked up and I was so angry. And I just like walked off the stage. Like, I didn't do my exit interview. I just left. And, it, and we filmed this on the studio a lot at Universal. And so I like, busted out the doors and was wandering around the lot and I just sat on a golf cart and I called Dave and Dave is and I told Dave everything that happened and Dave is like what the fuck did you do Dave's like no it's so good you did that Dave's like Norm Macdonald is a fucking genius he was trying to help you he liked you he's everyone's favorite comedian like what have you done and Dave made me feel so bad and then I called my parents and told them everything and my parents just start laughing hysterically they're like oh that's who you really are yeah. and they're like he got a taste of you like how it really is because that's how I treated my uncles when I was young I was always like fuck you fight back and so that like for years like oh and then that week I called my agents and was like whatever you do, like, please have them cut this out. Please, please, please. Because Dave had got it in my head that's going to, like, make everyone hate me because I'm fighting the no, most. No, it's so likable. Yeah, that but is likable. But I'm fighting the most beloved guy in comedy. Yeah, but he was a dick. I don't know. Anyway, so they're, like, they. my agents call the producers, like, they call me back. They're like, don't worry. It's never going to air. Like, they don't They don't want to air, whatever. It doesn't air. So for years, I'm walking around carrying this, like, Norm MacDonald hates me. I hate him. Can we? Do we have a clip of the... I've never seen it. I've tried. I've tried to dig it up. Um, I'm like, he hates me. I hate him. Like, this is this thing. Like, he's ever, he's the golden child of comedy. And I have this beef with him. Then, three years later, my ma my manager at the time emailed. It's like, oh, there's a dropout to open Irvine this weekend for Norm MacDonald. I'm like, okay. So I go. I walk in the green room. I'm like, hey, Norm. I'm like, you know, sorry about, like, our fight. He's like, what? He's like, why would I fight with you? What are you talking about? And he didn't remember anything. <laughs> oh, good. He was, and he was so nice, and it was great. And I, I, it was just, I'm so grateful that, like, instead of holding on to that forever, like, I got to, like, realize that it was absolutely nothing. You know what's yeah. so funny? This was nine years ago, and you were like, he had just gotten his cancer diagnosis, and you walk, <laughs> and you're like, sorry that I fought with him. He was like, I I'm going through something, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> but he really was, like, such a nice guy. and So funny. And then also, I watched his set that night, and I genuinely was like, fuck, these are good jokes. Like, the guy's got it. I know that's, like, everyone that's knows so that. so funny for you to learn that later on. I know. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, that's rest in peace i'm it's very sad and he's a fucking hero obviously i have been trying to look at death this is what i've been like learning from some of the stuff i've been doing as you have a contract in the universe of how long you're going to be here and that's just people's contract and it's like kind of not your business when they go or when they stay and it's been helping me a lot with people's deaths where I just go okay like this was their time and yeah because there isn't another option yeah so it's like why you why know like, fight it well on this and like it wasn't suicide and it wasn't fentanyl and it's like thank you Norm <laughs> yeah thank you I thought the lingerie one is um we should do it again it was so yeah. stupid but it also brought out Turns out when Esther and I are in lingerie, it, it brings out something in you. Well, you were looking really good. Thank I you. was, yeah. I, like I think you, Esther still was like a maid. <laughs> That's we, the more surprising part, not the sexy part, the maid part. No, but I did what you taught me to do, Annie, draw my boobs in. Uh-huh. I do think we should do lingerie again. I would like another. Oh, you know what? Dave was totally an asshole to me. He was like, Kalila's what did what we call she understood the assignment. <laughs> <laughs> No, but hers was like cat ears too, wasn't it? You both were like wearing. No. She. Is I thought different. it was Halloween. I was like, is this slut? I was like, is this slut Halloween? What's the theme? <laughs> we're going reverse here because for Halloween, we're going to dress as Con Air, right? That's right. Hell yeah. Well, oh, we kind of are now. Let's do <laughs> yeah. um, I've got a game to just okay, let's the, do this. Uh, dress like your man episode. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we want to see how many of the greatest guy movies you guys have actually seen. Okay. I'm just going to tell you. That's Esther's a guy movie. Zero. Esther's never seen a so, movie. And because, uh, you know, this could be subjective. So we just went with uh, the top list on Google, best guy movies of all time. So if Google says it, it's she not subjective. Like These are the real ones. The Godfather. Yes. yes. No. <laughs> <laughs> she has yelled at her Godfather, though. So it's Norm MacDonald. We've seen it. <laughs> all right. Die Hard. No. Uh, yep. Yes. 
We've oh, all experienced it on stage. Some of us with the CPAP machine. Okay. Scarface. <laughs> no. Of course. Yes. Let's just Esther's going. gonna have a Scarface uh, after she fucks us up. Fight Club. Yes. No. What? I've, I know. I, these You've are no like, no, I've never like dated the right guy that made me watch these. I've seen like No Country for Old Men. Like I've seen like. That is a great one. Yeah. yeah. I've seen good. all the ones my dad made me watch. Okay, Rocky. No. Yes. When your dad was like, I want you to see this movie called No Country for Old Men. Do you th did you think it was like AARP propaganda? <laughs> Where he's going to be like, give all your money to your father. Rocky was a big one for me. Uh, my new game is uh, let's keep going until Esther gets one. Okay. <laughs> I love that this game is like, have you seen all of the movies? How are these guy movies? Yeah. This is sexist, George. It's on Google. So Have you uh, seen 13 going on 30? No. I, um, See, you guys don't care about us. It's not that we don't care about you. <laughs> I have seen that one. Well, yeah. and you love uh, it. <laughs> all right, the Terminator. No. Yes. yes. Did you call it the Terminator? <laughs> that sounds like a porn I've seen before. Let's keep going. We were making fun of Esther for not okay, having seen Esther's it. still not, at a zero. It's not about me, Annie. Uh, the Good, the Bad, and the Ugly. No. Yes. I no. also made a remake of it. Todd did a whole thing in the beginning of the pandemic. Is that our podcast, me. The Good, the Bad, the Ugly? Oh, my God. Is that the name? <laughs> Lock, stock, and two smoking barrels. Yes. No. Yes. Wow, okay, this keep is going. getting crazy. Here's your last chance. Uh, saving she Private Ryan. She knows about Ryan. stock. She's like, stock. Saving Private Ryan, Esther. Saving Private Ryan. Where do they put the heroin? I've only seen shoot parts up? of it on what my dad was watching on HBO. I'd never watched the whole thing. Wow, band. we're at a zero, George. D Dirty Harry. No. Yes, I've seen Dirty Harry. And my friend had a really good joke about it. He said he went home with Clint Eastwood's daughter. This is Nick Maritato. He went, he went home with Clint Eastwood's daughter and he's like, and I could tell it was her because she had a dirty, hairy pussy. <laughs> so funny. What's that one? Oh, Grand Torino. I seen that one. Get oh, the, only the land. racist one. Yeah, where he calls her a By dragon the way, lady. Todd's mom, that's her favorite. She thinks it's like the. She thinks it's a comedy. She like cracks up. She thinks it's so funny. Wait, hang on. Go, go. Keep going. Keep Esther's going. still at a zero. Good fellas. Good yes, fellas, Esther. Come on. How did you know how to open a door? And if a guy likes you, is and... that the one where Sharon Stone blows him? No, that's no, casino. Not in it. Yeah, that's yeah, that's casino. No, I haven't. Here seen. we go. Come on, come on. National Lampoon's Animal House. Of course. He, yeah. What? What's it, the scene? What's the famous scene? Cupid, draw back your bow when he's eating lunch. I don't. We'll let, we have to give it to okay. her, or else we're gonna keep. <laughs> yeah, bothering. or else we're this never will be leaving. Two hour episode. Can All I? Right, um, Esther got one. We did it. <laughs> Esther Yay, got one. Esther. Can I? Um, <laughs> you guys. Today was so fun. I felt like I could go for another three hours with you. I, I'm so and happy. And she did not take blue chew, so that <laughs> is a big deal. I am so happy that the three of us could all be together. I know people have been sad that we're. it's not always like that, but it will be more and more. When did you, you just started to sound like an actress. This is the first time. And she's like, this has been so fun. I love being with you guys. <laughs> we are here loving each other. We like each other. Wait, did you say it right? No, we love each other. <laughs> Come on, Esther. Get with the old sperm, old whore. We're old outro. sperm. We're slugs. Kalila played with slugs when she was little. Annie called it that I am an actual slug. And here we are. The slugs were born. I don't know. Someone told me that on the episode I wasn't on that you guys said we are changing the name again. We're just going to say that forever, I guess. Okay. Probably. Who, who cares? Yeah. Okay. For now, we're Trash Tuesday. We're Kalila, Annie, and Esther. And we will see you fuckers next week. Hell yeah. Yeah.